this is the headline I want you all to see. This is uh, from today or yesterday, but Denmark's parliament just adopted a law banning burning the Quran which seems ridiculous for a bunch of reasons and also kind of defensible for some reasons. But I wanted to talk about what's going on here. And we talked about this, I think, uh, several, several weeks ago, but it's been a while. So maybe let me recap some of this. Several months ago in Denmark, they considered this law that would make it a crime to desecrate holy books in public. And now they've actually passed that law. It's just awaiting like a signature of the queen, which is a formality. So this is going to be a law. But basically, Denmark is violating any principles of free speech in order to coddle a handful of religious zealots. Um, and this bill basically says it's illegal to burn the Quran or any other religious book uh, in public places or in private places if you record it and post it online for an audience. Um, technically, the bill applies to any religious text for any like official religious group um, and other forms of supposed desecration. But like, it doesn't matter. We all know what they're talking about. It's burning the Quran specifically. The bill prohibits, and I'm quoting here, inappropriate treatment. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up. Here we go. Uh, this bill prohibits inappropriate treatment of writings with significant religious importance for a recognized religious community. So holy books for the religions that matter. It was passed with 90, uh, 94 to 77 in the parliament. In practical terms, it'll be forbidden to burn, tear, or otherwise defile holy texts publicly or in videos intended to be disseminated widely. Those who break the law risk a fine or up to two years in prison. The queen will sign it sometime in the next month. And again, this is, why is this happening? Why are they taking this step? I mean, this is a potential two-year prison sentence for destroying paper, even if you own it, if certain people take those particular words like super seriously, that is ridiculous. Like in 2017, I want to show you this. This was the headline a few years ago from The Guardian. Uh, go away ad on The Guardian. Here we go. This was the ad on The Guardian in 2017. Denmark scraps 334-year-old blasphemy law. That was great news. They had a blasphemy law in place. It was technically illegal to, to blaspheme. And they got rid of that finally in 2017. And now in 2023, they've decided to bring back blasphemy for some reason. Um, and here's kind of what's going on here. The ban did not come out of nowhere. It happened because over the summer uh, and months leading up to that, there were a whole bunch of protests and deliberate provocations in Denmark and in neighboring uh, Sweden, where they have smaller Muslim populations. In Denmark alone, there were nearly 500 book burnings, flag burnings between like July and October. And those protests were basically an attempt to block immigration by Muslims from Islamic countries. So we're talking about a bunch of bigots doing this because they really are anti-Muslim. And obviously then it got even worse because there was outrage in Muslim majority countries and that had a lot of consequences. It threatened Sweden's entry into NATO. Um, so the parliament in Denmark is like, oh no, what do we do? One, we want to get into NATO, but two, we also have economic ties to a lot of these uh, Saudi, uh, these Muslim countries. We don't want to ruin that. So there's a capitalistic motive to all this. So this isn't really about free speech or appeasing other forces as it is like they want to prevent diplomatic fallout. But the end result is that an action that doesn't actually hurt anybody is now going to be considered a crime, which means those bigots who are burning a Quran just to make Muslims angry and to drive them to do something over the top and potentially criminal, which is awful, obviously, but those people are now lumped in with the same like free speech activists who believe we have the right to burn books, so we should be allowed to burn books. They're all in the same category. And obviously, burning a book, no matter your intent, is not in the same ballpark of provoc. It's not in the same criminal ballpark 
as those who commit violence in response. I'm not trying to equate any of that. So when this bill was first proposed, one of the things that uh, someone said, let me show you this. This is the deputy prime minister here. Look at this quotation right here. It is the cornerstone of our democracy that you have the right to express yourself, said Deputy Prime Minister. You also have to behave properly. It's like, nope, it's not free speech if you do it in a way I like. That's not how it works. Behavior is in the eye of the beholder, right? Free expression doesn't mean anything if certain forms of free expression that are nonviolent and symbolic and don't actually hurt anybody are forbidden. And also, this new bill now, this raises so many questions. Think about this. What if someone burned a blank book with no writing inside, but said it was the Quran or the Bible? Like, does that count? Are you desecrating a holy book? I don't know. What if you're burning a Quran during a YouTube live stream, but no one watches your live stream? Does that mean it was meant for public dissemination? Like if a tree falls in the woods, you know, whatever. Um, what if you did it in private? Like you burned a Quran in your own house. No one was supposed to see it, but someone else records you and then spreads that. Who gets in trouble then? You for burning the book that no one was supposed to see or the person who secretly, covertly videotaped you? I don't know. Um, the Denmark, remember, you might remember like decade or so ago, there was a Denmark-based publication, Jillin's Posten, that famously printed satirical, arguably offensive cartoons of Muhammad. And they said that this, the draft law at the time, like anyone who videotapes this, just, when you say it's, we're only going to punish people who do this for public dissemination, <clears throat> it's like anyone can have a lot of followers or anyone's video can be seen by a lot of people. So this is a messed up law. <clears throat> and in response to all this, people have said, you know, uh, politicians have tried to say, we're not stifling free expression. Uh, it's not that extreme. They say it doesn't apply. You're allowed to criticize faith. Uh, you're allowed to write criticisms to faith. You can even publish those Muhammad cartoons again. They're just trying to ban these book burnings and not all the other ways you might be blasphemous or anything. But even so, now by passing this law, they are giving privileged status, special status to holy books, and those books do not deserve that. Like if the law carves out this special exemption for certain religions, where does it stop? Why not go after deliberately provocative cartoons if you're going to go after books? And why don't the rules, these you can't desecrate something that means a lot to people. Well, guess what? There are books that I take seriously, that I revere, if not worship. I would not like someone to burn, let's say, On the Origin of Species or whatever book I'm reading right now. I wouldn't want them to do it. It would hurt my feelings if they did it. But also, how come if it's a holy book, it's protected? But if it's a book secular people like, it's not protected. Like, this is that's why this is all a bad idea. For what it's worth, as far as I can tell, this law was passed. Yeah, it was passed by a majority in the parliament, but that was a lot of the centrist politicians doing it. People on the left opposed the law for free speech principles. The people on the right didn't like it for different reasons because uh, they think we should be able to burn books and anger Muslims. <laughs> and those centrists, like I said, they may have been more concerned with economic interests, not so much. We just want to protect the feelings of Muslims. Uh, or anything like that. I should say, in Sweden, by the way, they haven't gone this far. They're at least considering, because uh, they don't want to see the book burnings either, but they're saying we might want to consider if it's a, a national risk. Is this a security risk? Then we may want to take a step to prevent it. But if it's not a security risk, then uh, whatever, we're going to let it slide. But I think the danger in passing this bill is Denmark is now sending the message that certain religious texts are above the law. And that's a problem. Like it would be far more powerful for Denmark to say religious books cannot and should not receive special treatment, but also making an appeal to everybody to just consider the impact that burning these books may have on peaceful believers and try to speak to our better angels. Like, come on, don't make Muslims upset. Why are you doing that? Please don't. 
but also it's legal if you do, even if we don't like it. I, as hard as that is to say, I think that's the right way to go about it. I should point out uh, one other thing here. Humanists UK, which is a fairly active group, they have put out a statement, dismay, as Denmark reintroduces blasphemy law. They pointed out in their statement, this new law is a considerable backward step for Denmark in fulfilling its obligation to promote and protect the universal human rights of freedom of religion or belief and freedom of expression. These rights are mutually reinforcing as they allow for the free exchange of ideas, which is necessary for a tolerant society to flourish because it allows for hatred on the basis of religion or belief to be challenged. So I, I happen to agree with that. This is their director of public affairs. We would never advocate for desecration of books, venerated objects, and symbols. But to suggest that that in and of itself impacts a person's right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion is unacceptable, unless constituted as part of a wider hate crime. They're taking the Swedish approach here. If it's a hate crime, if you're doing it and it's a security risk, okay, let's talk about that. But to just say, hey, you can't do it, that is a step too far. Human rights law applies to people, books, venerated, uh, human rights law applies to people. Books, venerated objects and symbols, just like flags, are not protected by the right to freedom of religion or belief. There is no basis to protect venerated objects under international law. So right on. I mean, they have the right idea here. Doesn't mean anything's going to change because this will become a law. But I, I have to wonder, what's Denmark going to do after this law passes? What if a bunch of free speech activists decide en masse to burn Korans in an act of protest against the law, having nothing to do with Muslim people, just saying, all right, we're all burning this. What are they going to do? Are they going to arrest everybody? Are they going to put everybody in jail? There are no victims to that. Like if the country is worried about its reputation, where some bigots are trying to anger Muslims, there is a very real risk that Denmark becomes known as a place where free expression is punishable depending on who gets offended. That's a horrible precedent. The only people who deserve to be punished over a book burning, regardless of a book, are the people who commit crimes in retaliation, not the people who decide they want to burn the book for whatever their reason is.